In this series, we're going to look at localization with Laravel. Now, localization is the ability to basically translate page content based on the user's locale. And the locale will be something like EN or DE, depending on whether, you know, what's been selected, English, German, Spanish, whatever. And in this series, we'll look at adding translations to Laravel so we can switch between locales and basically see these new languages take effect. So let's first of all go ahead and install Laravel using Composer. So we use php composer.phar and we say create project Laravel, Laravel and prefer the distribution. Okay, so now that's installed, let's go ahead and open this in our browser and just take a look at what this looks like. So we've got this Laravel directory here and public. You can see we've got the default Laravel page. Let's go ahead and open this up in our brow in our uh, text editor. The first thing we'll do is remove the default hello.php view under the views folder. So we've got this hello.php view here, which you can see in the browser. We'll go ahead and we'll get rid of this. We don't need to see this. And we're going to create a new view and we'll go ahead and call this home.blade.php so we can take advantage of the blade templating engine. Now, we're also going to need to modify the root file to render this view instead of the one we just deleted. So let's head, head over to roots.php and we'll change this just to home. So if we go ahead and enter some test content in here, say hello, and we check this out in our browser, you can now see we've got the text hello here. Now we're going to look inside the app lang folder and we'll see that we already have some languages in here. So we've got this en directory, we've got pagination, reminders and validation. These are just what Laravel uses as default for things like the validation system and obviously for pagination and reminders as part of the authentication system. Now, these are simple arrays with key value pairs, and the key is the identifier for the translation text, and this is what we use to identify it when we want to output something to the user. We also need to use the names of these files when we're calling translated text. So, you need to choose the file names wisely, break them up into sensible sections when you start uh, to use sort of more and more translations. It's going to make it a lot easier to find what you're looking for. And obviously Laravel's already done that for us because pagination, reminders and validation, you know, you can just guess what they're for. So let's create a greetings.php file inside of this uh, en folder. So we'll call this greetings.php and we'll save that. So we obviously open up PHP tags and we return this array. And inside of here, if we pull this down for readability, I'm going to enter hello, and this is just going to be hello. Now let's create a language folder for the German language. So we need to create a new folder in here, and we'll call that DE. And then we'll create a new file with exactly the same name inside of here. So we'll call this greetings.php. We'll do exactly the same thing, so we could go ahead and copy and paste this. And instead of hello, we'll write hello. Now we need to learn how to access these translations to output them to our user. So over in our home view that we created earlier, we're going to output something using the double bracket syntax. And we're going to output trans and then choose the name of first of all the file and then the actual translation key. In this case, we know it's in greetings.php. So we choose greetings dot and then the name of the key. In this case, it's hello. So over to the browser and refresh, you see this works in exactly well, it's showing the exact same thing. Now, the reason it's automatically preferring EN is because inside of config and app, if you scroll down a little, little you can see that the locale is set to EN by default. If I was to change this to DE, you can see this changes to the German equivalent. Now, it's a good idea to sort of point out that we have this fallback locale as well. And this works really well if the locale that's supplied doesn't actually exist or the actual translation doesn't exist uh, inside of the file. So we'll fall back to the English version. So that's really, really useful. Now, we've used the trans helper function to actually output this in here. 
but it's good to know that this is actually part of the lang model and we can use lang and the static get method to get this as well. It just so happens that using trans as the helper function makes it super easy and quick, especially when you're outputting lots of text and it's all translated. Now we're going to look at using the set locale method to actually set the locale inside of our application. So we're going to head over to the roots.php file and use the trans set locale method and choose our actual uh, the, the locale. Now ordinarily you do this somewhere else, maybe in your um, filters folder, uh, filters file inside of before or something like that. Depending on where this is coming from, it could it probably coming from like a session or a cookie that's been set or the user's preference. So here we'll say lang set locale just to test we'll put it inside of our view and we'll choose the locale obviously in this case we've got two folders de and en so i'm going to choose de so now we'll see that this will change from hello to hello instead so that's how we set the locale we've learned how to create translation files inside of the lang folder and we've learned how to output them in a view